I first learned what an ocean feels like in the Andamans. I was six when my father was posted in Port Blair. It was here in the Andaman Sea that he taught me and my brother to swim. The islands have called me back year after year ever since. And every visit throws in a surprise. Hi, Sunveen. Hi, Diksha. I was just waiting for you. This time, I'm here again. And taking me on a journey is Diksha, a marine biologist and dive professional. She reminds me of the truths of this seemingly calm and quiet vastness. Don't let this fool you. If you put your face in the water where the water is barely two feet deep, it is so much alive. It's just bursting with stories all around. I've been diving for a few years, mostly for fun. But this time, thanks to Diksha's scientific expertise, we set out with a different purpose. To understand the complex web of life beneath the surface. The ocean covers about 70% of the Earth's surface and supports us in ways both seen and unseen. It provides food and livelihoods, influences the air we breathe and shapes our weather. Yet our understanding of the ocean and its creatures remains limited. As we lower ourselves into the depths, the ocean, as always, leaves me spellbound. For these marine creatures, it's just another day. But for me, it's a parallel universe with a surprise waiting at every turn. Like, what is this eel waiting for? And these shrimps, why are they digging here? The intricate connections between everything large and small are evident. By the time we get out, my head is brimming with a thousand questions for Diksha. And as she unravels the secrets of the ocean for me, I begin to connect the dots. In the oceans, all the animals, they are in one way or the other, dependent on the others. And you could see that right there as well. They all have relationships with each other. This particular relationship is called a symbiotic relationship where both the parties, whichever animals are involved, they benefit from the presence of each other. So here in this particular case, the shrimp has claws. 
which it uses to make that burrow where both shrimp and the gobi live. The gobi doesn't have any claws, but what it does is it stands guard right at the mouth of the burrow. Whenever it senses any threat around, it just flicks its tail and alerts the shrimp. And both the both of them, they just zoop, go into the burrow and save themselves. So the shrimp and the gobi, this is a symbiotic relationship between two animals that are free moving, that are free swimming in the water. But the same relationship you can see in animals where one is sedentary, it doesn't move, it just grows in one place and the other one is moving. For example, uh, when we were diving, did you see the anemone? And then around the anemone, did you see those orange? or uh, black colored or deep red colored fish, those are clownfish. Here the anemone and the clownfish are in a symbiotic relationship with each other. The sea anemone, it is providing home to the clownfish. Now sea anemone, they have stinging cells, just like jellies, they are relatives. So most of the fish, they don't like to feed on sea anemone, they don't like to go close to it because they will get hurt if they do touch the tentacles. However, a clownfish, it slowly attains this immunity against the stings and eventually starts living in an anemone where it is safe from all kinds of predators. What is the anemone getting in return? The clownfish, they generally keep the tentacles or the anemone uh, very clean because they keep feeding on whatever debris that gets collected on the anemone. Some researchers also say that uh, clownfish poop in a way fertilizes the anemone and keeps it keeps the environment nutrient rich. Oh, so how cool, they're friends then, yeah? You could say that, yeah. yeah. Cool. And so then what about the sergeant major and the moon rats? They, they didn't look very happy to me. That's actually the exact opposite end of the spectrum. Uh, what was what you were looking at there was a prey predator relationship now. On the top of the reef, there were a few patches that were purple. They were so possessive about it because they were their egg patches. The sergeant major damsels, they were the males that were defending the egg patches. So uh, eggs. Being eggs, they are highly nutritious. Most animals try and look for eggs and feed on them. Uh, also because it's easy to eat. Uh, now the sergeant major, what it's doing is, it's just standing guard. Whenever a fish that wants to eat the eggs, it comes closer. It just quickly swims towards it, tries to show it away. But the problem is, it's just one sergeant major. When it swims away from the egg patch, from the other direction, another two fish would come to eat the eggs. While Diksha patiently answers all my questions, what's been on my mind are the corals and their symbiotic relationship and how their health and survival could make or break this ecosystem. The corals themselves uh, they survive because of this particular relationship which is with an algae called zooxanthellae which lives in their tissue. Now what zooxanthellae is actually doing is uh, being algae, they are using the sunlight to produce food for themselves and for the corals which are providing home to the zooxanthellae. Now what happens is they are very susceptible to temperature change. Even when there is a 1 degree change in the water temperatures, the corals, they feel very stressed. When they are very stressed, they tend to expel the zooxanthellae out of their tissue. When the zooxanthellae is expelled out, the major source of food for the coral is expelled out. The corals themselves, they do have arms and tentacles to catch prey for themselves from the flowing water, but that's not enough. Because of this, if the zooxanthellae doesn't return, they're going to die. That's why if you did notice on the dives, the ones that are completely white in color, they were bleached. Bleached meaning all the zooxanthellae has now been expelled out of their bodies. Mm -hmm. 
I can now see how this marine world is woven together by shared experiences, coping mechanisms and coexistence, much like our own interconnected lives. The next few days reveal a symbiotic world. Crinoid shrimps find a home in feather stars. Gobies perfect the art of coral disguise. And bubble shrimps hole up in their bubble coral hideaways. It is on one of these mornings that I come face to face with a pump head parrotfish. These large fish with a hump on the head, bulbous eyes and protruding teeth look like aliens. They have thousand odd teeth that are probably the strongest in the animal world, even stronger than copper and gold. When they feed on algae growing on hard corals, they often bite off chunks of corals, crunch and grind them, and excrete them as sand that ends up on the beach. In fact, studies say about 70% of the white sand on a beach is most likely parrotfish poop. After the day's exploration, we set out to check the nightlife. This is super exciting. It's a very different world that suddenly wakes up the moment the sun hits the horizon. And there are so many other animals that you just don't know are there in the reef during the day, but they'll be up and about and all around the reef in the night. The ocean at night is a whole new world. The darkness is an ally for many creatures. Like the sea urchin that hides in the day but at night is out looking for a meal. Some creatures hide in burrows or rest on the surface using the night as the invisibility cloak. Others come out to hunt. By day, this eel hides in the shadows, but at night it becomes an active hunter. With a keen sense of smell and a long snake-like body, it navigates through nooks and corners, plotting surprise attacks. But these stealthy pursuits are often unsuccessful. The cuttlefish, with its camouflage and shape-shifting tactics, pulls off successful hunts under the cover of darkness. The last few days have revealed a fascinating world of interconnections. 
and as I prepare to say my goodbye with a deep sense of gratitude, I can't help but think the many ways this balance could tip away. Even if one element of this complex web is disturbed, the entire ecosystem can topple, causing cascading effects that will impact us all. Thank you.